How you doing? Justin here. I nearly lost my voice today, but uh, we're checking out Dead Flowers by the Rolling Stones. Fantastic country uh, era kind of Rolling Stones song. A little bit weird one for me. I played in a Rolling Stones tribute band for a long time and I always used to sing the harmony in this song. So trying to find the actual melody is kind of challenging as well as having a dodgy sore throat at the moment. But it's a really nice, very, very simple song. A uh, really good one for playing along with the original recording for beginner guitar players working on their groove because this sort of song by the Rolling Stones got such a nice feel, you know. So uh, the strumming pattern's fairly simple, so it's just really trying to lock into the pattern and playing along with the original recording and trying to, kind of sitting in the pocket, trying to make it feel like you're playing in the band is what you want to be looking for uh, more advanced guitar players definitely should be checking out the licks and stuff in this because there's some fantastic guitar playing uh, you can listen to the individual speakers there between Keith Richards and Mick Taylor there to hear the um the balancing of these kind of country phrases and the little uh, little chord movements and stuff it's be very very uh, beautiful guitar work in this song but uh so first of all, the, the two strumming patterns, because they're really simple. The, the, the verse strumming pattern, the main kind of one, is just down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, really, really simple. In the chorus, it's sometimes that, and sometimes it's just even uh, strumming, eighth note strumming, but with an accent on two and four. So you have this sort of... So just strumming slightly harder on two and four, but strumming actually one and two and three and four and so down, up, down, up, down, up, every bar, you know, it's a fairly big deal. But let's simplify it down as we usually do to just four down strums per bar. Um, actually, before we do that, I just mentioned the, the very beginning uh, is a D chord, lift off second finger, so it's a D sus, and you've just got four and before you start. So one, two, three, four and one, and then put that second finger down right on beat one there. So one, two, three, four and one, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. Okay, that's the way that that little uh, intro works. We will talk a little bit about embellishments as, as well a little later, maybe. Um, so the intro, a bar of D, a bar of A, a bar of G, lots of different ways to play G, use whichever one you feel most comfortable with, into the verse, D chord sitting A, with your G chord upholstered D, same sequence again. D chord, then to A chord, that's your G, two, three, four, and back to D. What's going on there? It's the same sequence again, so D to A, and then to G chord, and back to D. One more time through that. D chord going to A chord, then to G back to D, into the chorus. Take me a little for two bars, Susie. Take me D for two bars. One, two, three, four, back to A. I know you think you're the queen of the under. D for two bars. Then we're going to a G for two bars. Send me that flowers 
every decoy. Two bars again. Back to G for two bars. G. Send me dead flowers by the D again. For two bars. G chord. Send me dead flowers to my D chord. For two bars. And then it's D again. I'll explain why I'm saying it like that. D. Get a chord on my G. And back to D. Now that's kind of a lot, it seem, well, it would seem like, until you kind of simplify it. So when you're learning a tune like this, you want to try and always think of like writing the chords out in the simplest way possible. So for this one, the intro and the verses are D, A, G, D. Okay, that's the chord sequence. Okay, so it's kind of four times through that f for one verse. Okay, so D, A, D, G, D, A, G, D. All of that twice, you could say, okay? So it, either a four-bar sequence four times or an eight-bar sequence twice. Up to you how you think of the 16-bar uh, thing. Then we've got the, the kind of what I think of the pre-chorus, okay, the Take Me Down Little Susie bit is A, A, D, D, A, A, D, D. Okay, pretty simple. Two bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of A, two bars of D. Or just A, A, D, D twice. Okay, so try and think of the, the like building blocks that you can arrange them in different ways and, and use the one that is easiest for you. I tend to think in kind of eight bar blocks personally, but you can break it down into fours as well. Um, the rest of the chorus, G, G, D, D, G, G, D, D, G, G, D, 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 A, G, D. Okay, so you've got G, G, D, D times three and then D, A, G, D at the end. The, the, the last little part's the same as the verse. Okay, so it's very important to try to remember these song structures and the forms and to remember that a song like this isn't it's not a difficult song to remember you know so trying to remember just those simple or as, as broken down chord progressions as you possibly can get even just writing them down on a bit of paper so that then you can play along with the original recording without having to try and think like this whole you know because the chorus is what 32 bars no not 32 bars uh, 24 bars long which is quite a lot to remember 24 different bars, but if you break it down to G, G, D, D times three, and then the same sequence as the verse times one, it's a lot simpler, hey, to, a lot easier to remember. So, um, like I said, for beginners, the real big deal here is playing along with the original recording and trying to cop that feel, because the feel on this song is super, right? So really trying to play along with that will, will help you improve your groove. You want to be aiming that your strumming is so in time with the recording that it sounds like you're in the band. That's what you should be aiming for, okay? That should be your goal when you're practicing that sort of stuff. And like I said, more advanced guitar players get in and start transcribing some of the licks from this, because there's loads and loads of real classic country guitar riffs to work out. Again, the harmony is pretty simple, so so there's nothing too complicated going on harmonically, you know, so that the transcribing of that shouldn't be too difficult for most, you know, intermediate level guitar players. So uh, really hope you enjoy this tune. Remember, there's hundreds of beginner songs over on the website, more than a thousand free lessons altogether. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. And I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye bye.